Now, some things to note. We haven't learned a new way of differentiating. Where you, you still only have one method for differentiating, and that method is to bring the power to the front and subtract one from the power. And what, what you have been introduced to is different a, a different way that the function may be presented to you and then a different way you go about applying that process of differentiating. It's just a different way of applying the, the method that you know. Now, this different way called using the product rule will be used for every method of differentiating. So when we get to logs and we learn about differentiating logs, you'll still use the product rule if you're given a product of functions. You, if When we get to trig functions and we learn about differentiating those, if you get a product of functions, including trig functions, trig functions being multiplied, and you're asked to differentiate that, then you must use the product rule. So many other things stay the same as well. That expression you're getting, the derivative that you're getting as a result of using the product rule, still represents the gradient. You will still need to know the x value that you're at on your curve if you want to know the actual size of the gradient, the value of the gradient. Remember, differentiating just gives you an expression for the gradient. If you want to evaluate it, know its exact size, then whether it's positive or negative, then you've got to substitute an x value into your expression. Um, you'll still, the, the points of interest will still be where the gradient is zero, you will still be getting the equation of a tangent because all the that you've found is an expression for the gradient of the tangent. So equations of tangents. Normals stay the same. They're still a straight line perpendicular to a tangent through the point of contact and you'll be still asked to get the equation possibly of a normal. Um, I think we've covered just about all of that. Uh, just so that you can fill this in, equations of tangents and, norm and normals are found by using the point gradient. Well, you've been doing that anyway. Form of a straight line. And for those of you that uh, didn't see the bottom of my in context page, which I think of talked about on a different video, I tried to um, demonstrate how what a normal is. Um, it, it came really from this concept as well, or this diagram as well, where the tangent is drawn here at P and the normal is demonstrated as being perpendicular to the tangent and going through the point P. Could I just ask you to um, cross out that function that I've got there and replace it with um, y equals x cubed bracket x plus 1 all to the fourth? Um, really, the function that's there is uh, that doesn't require the um, product rule, so replace it with this one. Now, we would use the product rule because we're not going to expand the bracket to the fourth power. Um, so, we would say... Um, let u bar of u is the x cubed and u dash is 3x squared and v is x plus 1 to the fourth and v dash is 4 times x plus 1 to the power 3 normally then times the derivative of inside the bracket, which is a 1, which won't make any change. So we've got our u and u dash v and v dash defined over here on the side. 
like I said, the students that actually showed that they're going to join that one and that one were more likely to get the correct answers and full marks in the HSC questions. So differentiate it and find the gradient of the tangent at the point 44. So let's set about differentiating at dy dx. Notation we'd use because we call the function y is u v dash plus v u dash. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you say v dash u plus u dash v or v u dash, you can swap these all around. Um, u v dash is x dx times, whoops, we need a 4 in there x plus 1 cubed and a 4 plus b is x plus 1 to the power of 4 times 3x squared. Almost always have a common factor. So we could take out x squared and we could take out x plus 1 to the power of 3. Now, taking that out of the first term, we'll be left with a 4 and an x. Taking it out of the second term, we'll be left with a 3 and another x plus 4. Oh, sorry, x plus 1. That then gives us x squared. x plus 1 cubed and that will be 4x plus 3x is 7x and the constant is 3. It also goes on to ask you to find the gradient of the tangent. This is the expression of the gradient of the tangent. But the actual gradient at the point 4, 4. And so you can see there that I have... Um, when x is equal to 4, this gradient is going to be subbing 4 into this expression here. This is quite a large number, 62,000. Moving on, use the point gradient form to find the equation of the tangent. Point gradient, here's my point, here's the gradient, and you've done this before. y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. I haven't gone on to simplify that. Um, mostly because this number is so big. If uh, you're finding you're not getting the same answer as the answer in the back, then just check your um, numbers and um, continue on with simplifying, expanding brackets, etc., group, moving terms to the one side uh, or the opposite side of the equal sign. Um, write down the gradient of the normal, or well, the gradient of the normal is minus the reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent, and you can see I've subbed that in without expanding these brackets and collecting like terms. So hopefully you'll be right now to do exercise 7F.